seminar workshop leader for over 15 years uh, and a coach for over 10. Uh, in 2001, she founded the Women's Mosaic, a nonprofit organization that promotes intercultural understanding and empowerment among women. Hmm? We can't hear you. Can't hear me. <laughs> how, about if, how about now? <laughs> That's not awkward. Hey, not awkward at all. Uh, I'm sure HR will have something to say about that. <laughs> she has been recognized as one of Hispanic Magazine's Top Latinas of 2004, uh, was the recipient of the 2007 Diva Visionary Award from Tango Diva, and uh, the WNBA's New York Liberty honored her as a 2009 inspiring woman. Uh, she's author of the Personal Growth Gab. Uh, our library has copies, so feel free to check those out. It's also on Amazon. Information is there. And welcome. Thank you. Okay, so clearly a popular topic so sorry. for people. <laughs> yeah, all right. Feeling a little lost? Yeah, okay. So how many people have seen these? You guys all look like new faces. Anybody seen me speak before? A couple people, yay. Okay, and back there two ladies. Um, so the way that I start all my talks, I know you really just got settled in. And just, but please trust me on this. I'd like you to stand up. Sorry about that. Trust me, it's worth it. Okay, so I want you to stand up. I just want you to close your eyes. And you guys, too, in the back room, too. Okay? So I just want you to close your eyes for a minute and take some deep breaths, okay? So a big belly breath in and expand your stomach and your lungs and then oh, just let the day out. Exhale. And then another big inhale. titles outside the room. So your job title, your title as a father, wife, mother, sister, friend, leave all those titles outside the room. Ah, just get calm and centered in your body. Breathe, let your shoulders a little bit. Feel the feet, feel the ground on your feet. things that you can do for yourself is constantly check in with yourself. Because we're talking about who are you and what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Well, who are you part's pretty big. And if you can't listen to your own thoughts and feel your own feelings, you're, you're not going to know anything about yourself. Right? About what you need, what you want, all these things. So I always, you know, no matter what I'm talking about, this really is such a key thing to do. And, um, you know, you, you know, I don't like to put labels on anything, but it's just, you know, just check in with yourself. And it just takes a few breaths. We're running around, we live in a crazy city, we're living in a crazy time. Oh, just take a minute. And another thing that you can do is in the morning, every morning when you wake up, again, 10, 5, 15 minutes, whatever you can do, take some time with yourself, right? Don't just rush up and, you know, Grab your phone, grab your coffee, and you don't want to have this frantic day, right? You want to be in control of your time and your energy. You want to be in control of your day. You want to have some intention for the day. You want to know what you're doing. Oh, so give that gift to yourself. Take 5, 10, 15 minutes. You can drink your coffee, tea, have nice music in the background. If you have a prayer or a mantra, great. The same thing, 
when you come home in the evening. So when you're transitioning from your day into the evening, okay, take a minute. I personally like to lie flat on my back with my knees up. And as is the case with me a lot of times, I do things because they feel good and they feel right and they find, and then I find out there's like some scientific thing that's, you know, it's like your, your neurons or whatever. It's like good to do that. It resets your electrical system, whatever. <laughs> it feels good, okay? <laughs> and so you want to just, that's like the processing time, right? Because you've already had a whole day. <sighs> so just release the day, get all the stresses, whatever you need to like process. Like have a journal there. We'll talk about some journaling to write all this stuff down. Because again, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? That's always going to be your best guide in anything that you do. So this, this will help you in every area of life. So um, that being said, so we have lots of ground to cover tonight. Obviously, it's like a pretty big question. Who are you? What are you supposed to be doing with your life? I promise you that I probably won't give you the answer to that. Okay, so don't come expecting some magic pill, but what I hope to do is really sort of, you know, stimulate you to think about some things, to think about yourself and your life a little differently, perhaps, and to consider some things maybe you hadn't considered before, okay? And to give you some motivation to do the work to figure out the answer to that question, okay? So... Um, so we have obviously a really big group tonight, sometimes we have smaller groups, so we can't be quite as interactive with each other, let's say, but um, I would like you to, well first of all, also I'd like to really congratulate you for being here. You could be doing a thousand other things tonight, right? I don't know what's on, is The Bachelor on TV tonight? I'm not sure what's going on tonight, <laughs> but um, you could be doing a whole bunch of other things, but you chose to, with your time and energy to come and to try to, to, to think about some of these things. So I, I, I want you to use this time as productively as possible. And what I mean by that is be honest with yourself. So when I say be honest with yourself, no one is in your head tonight. No one's you know, hearing or thinking what you're feeling, Not, you know, nothing. Like only you know what's going on with you. So if I'm saying things or if something hits you or if you have an aha, it's like pay attention to that. So it's being interactive with yourself, right? That's what I want you to do. I want you to be interactive with yourself and pay attention to how you're thinking and feeling and reacting to maybe some of the things that I'm saying. Um, so yeah, so I hope to give you some motivation, some inspiration, some, uh, you know, maybe a kick in the butt if that's what you need um, to, to really think about what are the changes that you can make to make your life better. What are the changes that you can make to become the fullest, most realized, you know, your, express your fullest potential, whatever that is. And that's gonna look different for every, every single person in here. But, you know, perhaps you've never even thought about these things before, so congratulations. This is like a great new beginning for you. And I know it's also the new year, right? So these are also questions that come up, you know, usually in a new year, new year, new you, new chapter. Um, we're sort of in a, in now we're sort of getting into like a double new year with the lunar new year that's coming up, right? So if you go by lunar kind of cycles, that's kind of also another big how. Um, so yeah, so there's no A to B to C. If you're very left brain oriented, you see I have no PowerPoint. That means you have to listen to me, right? You can't check out and just look at words on the screen. That means you really have to listen to me, okay? So, um, plus I don't really know how to use PowerPoint, but it works for me, it works for what I do, okay? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I, I hope that, that, you know, you get the juices kind of flowing and um, figure out, hello, um, figure out what, what, what are some answers to these questions for you. So, and you know, I've been giving this talk, the first time I gave this talk was in September of 2002 a long time ago. But that was the year after September 11th, right? It was the one year anniversary. People got shaken up at that time. Um, but, you know, if the world was different. Um, a lot of people said to me, well, you know, why would I want to follow my dream job or anything like that? Because I need security. Well, if anyone could tell me today, January 2018, where there is job security. Where? Right? 
So, so it's kind of what happens. So this has always been my thing of like personal growth. Who am I? What am I doing? And you know, I want my life and my work to sort of all blend together. This is this has been my thing, sort of how I was born. Not everyone's born this way, but I would say around 2008, right? September 2008, when the financial crisis hit, all of a sudden people were kind of forced to think about, well, wait a second. Uh, now I have no job, I have no job title. Who the hell am I without that job title, without that salary? Right, because we identify so much with that, especially if you had a secure job in banking, in education, in healthcare. How many hospitals have, I mean healthcare, right? Things that you would have thought were traditionally secure type jobs, it just doesn't exist, right? And it's only gotten progressively it's changed because, uh, you know, this little device thing here, right? So technology is great. So hi everybody on Facebook um, that we're able to um, <laughs> to talk to who the hell knows who's watching right now. But hello, um, you know. So technology is great, right? We're able to do lots of things with it, but it's also put a lot of people out of work, right? It's changing whole industries. It's changing the way we live. And I'm sorry, but there is no ethnicity, there's no religion, there's no government to blame on that. It's just technology. So who do you blame for technology? I don't know, okay? So what it's doing though, it's forcing everyone to go back into themselves, right? Because you don't really have the external. So we're looking obviously in, in very uh, sort of, let's say tumultuous, times, right? So, so the only security that you can really have is the security in yourself, right? So that's why this question, which it's always an important question, who are you, what are you supposed to be doing with your life? But I think more than ever, at this particular moment in time in history, in the world that we're living in, you kind of don't have a choice because you have to figure out how are you going to navigate all of these massive changes. How are you gonna navigate them? Because the external is not gonna provide you the security. And I think that's hard for some people, you know, to sort of grasp. But I think the, the more that you shift your focus to relying on security outside of yourself and bring it inside of yourself, the better time you're gonna have over the next three, four, five, ten years. You know, who knows what's happening. So so that's sort of like the overall vibe. And, and, and it's also, you know, this is a new era. Obviously, you know, things are changing, the country and the world. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, seek purpose and meaning in their life and in their work, right? And so to me, my answer to always that is, my answer to that is always to just be yourself. That's the answer. Because you have something that you don't have, that you don't have, that you don't have, that you don't have, that is going to make a difference in someone's life. And so the more you can be yourself and be all the different parts of yourself and do whatever it is you're supposed to do, whatever your unique combination of gifts, talents, abilities, uh, interests, all of that, whatever that is, that's the thing. Like you don't need to do the Peace Corps. If, you, if that's your thing, then great, go do the Peace Corps, but you don't have to work for a nonprofit. You don't have to do anything that's quote unquote charitable or altruistic. You just need to be you. You need to be the most peaceful you here. We'll talk about that. And the most fulfilled version of you because if that is, um, that's just, that's the answer. That is the benefit that you will have to other people. So we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, so yeah, so, um, and I tend to ramble sometimes, so you can just bear with me. So, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about, I'm gonna give you some extra motivation. Obviously you guys are very motivated, you're here already, but I wanna give you extra motivation to really do the work, because it's work, right? And this is the other thing that people don't like to hear, you're responsible for your own life. You're responsible for your own happiness. You are. And I know the economy, I know this, I know that, I know, you know, I know my family, I know that, you know, I, you, there's lots of blame we can put around but honestly, at the end of the day, you have more power than you think you do, right? Which is actually a good thing 
because if you have the power, if you have the power, if you got yourself into this situation somehow, if you really, 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 really are honest with yourself, that means you have the power to get yourself out of the situation. That means you have the power to make your life better. So everything I'm always trying to do is to get you to realize, guess what? You actually have the power to change, right? It's not, it's not all out here, right? It's not in all this other stuff. Yeah, okay, that factors in, sure. But at the end of the day, you got a lot more mojo than you think you do. Okay? So, so we'll give you some extra motivation, and I'll give you some ideas to think about, like, how do you figure out who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, and we'll sort of take it from there. So, <coughs> oh yeah, and I wanted to find out, so how many people are um, in transition, career transition, like you're sort of between jobs, and that? Okay, so about half. Um, how, people, how many people, um, how many people love their job? Okay, but you're here anyway, so that's interesting. <laughs> no, 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 but that's interesting. And so, you know, been, because there's other parts of our lives, you know, that are talking, you can love your job, but still feel like something's missing, right? So we can, we can talk about that too. Um, okay, so, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let me give you some more motiva extra motivation to figure some of these things out. Um, I got five extra reasons for you, for, for, to add to whatever reasons brought you here. Okay? The first reason is you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> like someday you're not going to be here anymore. Right? And I like to start out with the sort of morbid thing because like, you know, what is what do they say? You know, the, thing, the three things that are certain in life, right? Taxes, Taxes death, death yeah. and change. Right? <laughs> and that's the other thing that humans say is change. Right? So, um, so yeah, so you're gonna, you're gonna, one day you're not gonna be here. And hopefully, you know, we're gonna live now until 120 or whatever it is, right? Um, but look, we've all lost people, you've all experienced loss in some way. And that, there's always a moment where you think about, oh, okay. You know, it sort of might set things right for you. But, but when things are less in a crisis period, it's good to think about this. So, you know, when the time comes and you look back on your life, you did. How do you feel about what you did? Like it really puts things in perspective, right? And we all know stories of people when they're faced with that question and all of a sudden their life changes, right? But I would prefer to be proactive about that rather than wait for that situation to force me to think about these things, right? So your time and your energy is your most valuable resource. Your time and your energy is your most precious and valuable resource. So how are you using your time and your energy? So when you're 90 or 100 or 120, how did you use your time and energy when you had it? So it's a, it's a pretty straightforward question. What would your obituary say? What would people say about you at your funeral? What did you create? What did you accomplish? What did you experience, right? And then you can kind of work backwards. So when you think about well, what you want it to be, then you can start making decisions based on achieving those things, right? So you can work backwards. So you are the architect of your life. You're the director of your movie, right? You're the author of your book, whatever metaphor you want to use. And um, you know you, you and, and also, you know, Denzel Washington, my wife saw him on something once, and he has a great quote. He said, you never see a U-Haul following a hearse. <laughs> you never see a U-Haul following a hearse. Right? So what are you taking with you when you go? And what is, has meaning and purpose and value to you? So that when the time comes, because that U-Haul is not following you, so what did you achieve, really? And that's not to say that it's not okay to have beautiful, nice things, right? But put everything in its proper perspective. And take action based on what are the things that are your priority. Right? Okay, so, um, so, point, so extra motivation number two, you are living in the good old US of A. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? And hopefully this won't get into any other broader discussions. Just, just, just try to, to take this in the most simplistic terms. 
And, and I'm sure maybe some of you have families that literally risked their lives to be here, right? So with, with all the issues that we have in our country, let's just put politics aside and all that, there is still something about America, about the United States of America, about the ideal of America, about the energy of America. I mean, I talk to other Western democratic places, whether it's Western Europe, and, and, and yes, okay, there's, there's certain things that are there, but there's still not this sort of like ability to achieve, to do anything, you know, and, and I know there's other things that factor into that, but, but the essence, right, the spirit, the vibe of it, there's nothing like it on the planet Earth other than our country. It's kind of, it is kind of special in that way. So, you know, if you think about people that literally risk their lives to be here, whether they climb, they go through sewer tunnels, whether they shove their bodies in container ships, whether they are good, honest, decent people but have to lie, cheat, and steal to get here to get a better opportunity to escape some persecution, or whatever it is, you, you know, it's, it's, you're already here. Right? And not only are you here, but you are in New York freaking city. <laughs> okay? You're not in like some little like 20 person town in Wyoming. No offense to Wyomians if everybody's here. But you know, talk about opportunity. I just actually had a client the other day who, was, who moved from LA to Grand Rapids, Michigan, and she's bored to tears. Like it's really hard for her. So, you know, there's other reasons why I think it's good that she's there, but but think of it, you're in New York City. You're in New York City. So and so that's like that's like potential and opportunity and dreaming like like on steroids, right? <laughs> in terms of like what you can kind of do to create and all of that. So like that's pretty amazing. And like you're here. You know how many people would like risk their lives or whatever you, however you want to define that to be sitting in the chair that you are sitting in with the luxury of thinking about, oh, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Not escaping, not a refugee, not escaping war, not trying to just survive with you know, food uh, and, and just your life, but to actually have the luxury to think about this. Not just how am I gonna live, how am I gonna exist, how am I gonna survive, but how am I gonna make my life the best it's gonna be? Like really, think about like the awesome, privilege, opportunity, whatever you want to call it is, that you guys have sitting here. Like, do not waste that. Do not waste that. People, I mean, what is, oh my God, what people would give for that. So, okay, so, um, uh, so, so okay, third point is sort of related and, and maybe, maybe it's your cup of tea or not, but, you know, I do believe in reincarnation. I believe you also earn the right to be. So this is also an opportunity. I think you earn the right. And this is a great time for you to accelerate in your own personal growth and evolution. Don't waste it. So number four, world peace. Okay, so why is the question of who I, if you figure out who are you, what are you supposed to be doing with your life, how is that contributing to world peace? Well, think about it. So everyone that you knew, took the time, figured out that question, and then was doing what they're supposed to be doing. Think about what a much more pleasant subway ride you would have. <laughs> right? Think about less divorce. Right? Think about less crime. Right? So I was an IR major, international relations major, and so there's something called a sphere of influence. Right? So we all have our sphere of influence. So if you think about happy wife, happy life, you've heard that expression. So we're all contagious, not with the flu, hopefully, right? <laughs> but we are, we're beings of energy, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, we're energy, right? So however we're feeling, whatever's going on with us, people are gonna pick that up, subconsciously or consciously. People are gonna pick it up. So you have to be responsible for your own little world. What are you bringing to the table? What kind of energy are you bringing in the room? Because think about it, you all know when someone comes in and they're like pissed off or miserable, and, right? It affects the whole room. And conversely, if someone's like, it does, yay, right? Like they can change the room, unless you want to like kill them because you're so happy. But, you know, so um, think about it.
about, think about that, right? And so you have your own responsibility to keep yourself as peaceful and happy and fulfilled as possible because you know that's gonna ripple out. So if everyone took their, their responsibility to make their little sphere peaceful, it'd be a much better place, right? And then, and then that can multiply depending on what kind of work you do, what kind of responsibility you have, but even in your own family, right? Your own family, your own community, your own workplace. All of those things, how you show up affects people. And again, whether it's conscious or subconscious, they're picking it up. You know, if you're like, yeah, I walk into a room after there's a big fight or something, like you feel that, right? We're, we're, sens we're more sensitive than we think we are. So yeah, so like I was saying before, you don't really need to be Mother Teresa, you know? You just need to like take care of you and do you and be peaceful in and of yourself. Um, okay, and then the fifth extra motivation reason is it's practical, okay? And that goes back to the question, the point that I made earlier about security, right? So if you don't like any of those other things, if you don't care about those other things that I talked about, guess what? If you're looking for a job, it's practical. It's practical to figure out who are you, what should you do, because that means you're going to align yourself with the best type of work that's going to pay you the most amount of money and make you the happiest, most peaceful, fulfilled person that you can be, right? And this is a journey, right? It's not gonna happen overnight, but at least if you just stick to who you are, what resonates with you, what makes sense, guess what? You're gonna be able to strategize better, you're gonna be able to recognize an opportunity better, you're gonna be able to talk to people and say what you're looking for, and you're gonna come through with enthusiasm, you're gonna come through with confidence because you know who you are and what you want, and why you want the job and why you think you'd be great for that job. Does that make sense? So if nothing else, it'll get you a good job. <laughs> okay, because I, I know people need that part too. Um, yeah, so and, and a lot of the times, you know, I do another talk here called Staying Motivated Throughout the Job Search Process or Pink, Pink Slips How Losing Your Job is a Good Thing. Because generally I'm talking to about half the room and I'm not sure about you guys back there or anybody watching, but if you're really honest with yourself, right? If you're really honest with yourself, and if you've gotten laid off or fired, you probably didn't want that job. You probably didn't want to be there. You were probably secretly wishing or subconsciously wishing like this is miserable. <laughs> and I see a lot of heads nodding, lots of heads nodding, lots of heads nodding. It's the truth, because it's the truth. Because what happens is because as humans, we're kind of lazy, right? And so, and that's just, you know, normal. So generally what happens is you kind of know you need to make a change, you're miserable, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? It's easier just to complain, right? It's more comfortable, because you're just used to it, right? It's too scary to make a change, right? So you don't do anything. But guess what? At some point, the universe is going to force a change. The universe is going to make the change. I personally would rather be in control and kind of proactive and have the change be on my time. But you know what? Human nature is generally, you got to be in a lot of pain and suffering to actually do something to make change. So try not to be the typical human, you know, and, and, and get ahead of it. And, and, if, and if it is what it is, then it's fine. But accept, but here's the thing, if you're in that position, take responsibility. I don't want you to sit there, and I've worked with clients who for months blame the boss or blame this or blah, 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 you know, and just, you know, are so angry and bitter about losing their job. But when actuality, you really take the responsibility, you probably weren't supposed to be there in the first place and didn't want to be in there in the first place. So why are you blaming all this other stuff? Take it as an opportunity to answer this question and to make the changes that you know you needed to make all along. Whether it's career, job or it's with your health or it's relationships or whatever it is that was suffering because of that negative situation that the universe so lovely so graciously got you out of right and that you're complaining about it but you really should be thanking it right so so i just want you to think about that and 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 you know always again because that puts the power back in your hands that means you can change the situation. 
even if it's just changing your attitude, you have the power to change your attitude about the situation. And if you change your attitude, guess what? You feel better. And who doesn't want to feel better? Right? So, okay. So, any questions, comments? Anything? I know I'm like getting all fired up here. Okay. So, um, all right. So, I, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I noticed that most people, for some reason, they shut down that muscle of uh, imagination and creativity. Can you speak to that? Yeah, because it's something that's not valued, first of all, in our society, right? So we're told, you know, we're very left brain oriented, right? Do you guys know the difference between left brain and right brain? So left brain is very logical, um, point A to point B and point C, it's survival skills. We need our left brain, right? We need our left brain. It's sort of a masculine way of doing things, it's linear, right? Your right brain is the more creative, intuitive, imagination, um, feminine, uh, conciliatory, consensus building, right? We need both. It's just that the world, you know, and whether you want to put it on patriarchy or whatever, but the world has valued, or at least our culture, our society, in recent history, has valued the left brain way of doing things and valued it in all sorts of ways, including monetarily. So, you know, I think it's interesting and sort of not to totally go off on this, but I did run a women's organization, right? And I used to say, well, it's because testosterone like ran amok and, and kind of made a mess of the world. And it's just, it's not that it's bad, right? It's not that it's bad. We need men, we need, and, and, does it, and, and it's really masculine feminine, right? It's not, it's just that uh, most men, okay, are masculine. Most women are feminine. Okay, but not really. We all have masculine and feminine. So I like to talk about masculine and feminine, not necessarily about men and women. Um, but we need both, right? So it's about balancing out uh, both of those aspects, those approaches. It's the yin and the yang, right? The yin and the yang. There's no yin and yang. It's like being rational or irrational. Excuse me? Rational or irrational. The positive or negative, depending on the balance you are going to rational deal with. Or right, right. Rational or irrational. <laughs> exactly. But it's, it's a balance. So that's why, and you want to integrate the both, right? It's like so, offer and demand and the point of equilibrium. Otherwise, you never make it. Okay. <laughs> um, let's go with the yin yang slide. Everybody knows the yin yang slide, right? So, um, just, you know, like, so, so you know, the, the yin is the soft, receptive, right? Yang is the, the pushing, assertive, right? Even one or the other by itself, not good. It's just that. And so much of my work, this is how I go on tangents. So, so much of my work is getting people out of their heads. Okay? You have a whole body here, like a whole instrument. So we're told to run on this logic thing. And we're told, or we're conditioned that like our brain is running the show, but honestly, really, the truth? Here's your power. Right? Your gut. Your gut's really where your brain is. Right? And your heart, your feelings, your emotions. Do you walk around emotionally constipated most of the time? Not good, right? So we need to get, so the way I operate, like even when I do these talks, if I start thinking, I will not make any sense. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking from here, okay? And my brain is just translating. My brain is just translating what's going on and hopefully explaining it and articulating it somehow. But this is where your information and your power and your wisdom, and this is going to give you all, all the information. So, um, so, so, you know, if you're just living from here to here, like you're just going to, analysis paralysis, right? Have you heard about Jill Bolte Taylor? She had a stroke, right? And, or, or if you had a stroke, let's say in just your right side of your brain, you only have the left side functioning, you would never be able to make a decision. Because it's just analysis process. You need the emotion, you need energy in motion to take action, to spur you into a decision. So you need both. So, you know, and also, you know, again, back to technology, this is taking us out of our body. It's taking us out of our body, it's taking us into emotional porn, you know, violent, you know, like, the, and, and I say that because 
people are so desperate because you're we're emotionally constipated that we're so desperate to feel anything, right? And so whether you're gonna get it from some crazy video that you're watching or somebody yelling or all this extreme stuff that's going on, or this is why we have a crisis of opioids and drugs and things like that, you know, if you just took care of yourself and processed your feelings and emotions as they come up, that way you get a much more integrated system. Does that make sense to you guys? I mean, this is, and this is how you figure out who am I and what am I supposed to be doing with my life? It's not gonna come from here. It's gonna be a feeling, it's gonna be a knowing, and it's gonna be the left brain is gonna help you analyze the information and organize it. But it's not gonna tell you what it is, per se. Right, so that's why it's really important. So thanks, I don't know if that answered your question, but thanks, just let me talk about all that stuff. <laughs> Which I think is really important, it's not necessarily my talk. Um, any other questions, comments before we move on? Uh, just, just a quick one. What was it about you that you knew that you wanted to be such a powerful person in front of the room, sharing, giving? That's a great question, because I never wanted it. <laughs> being, just being amazing and making a difference in people's lives. What, how'd you know that that was in you? Okay, so thank you for that question. And that's, so that, and actually thank you, because that leads me a little into like the sort of who are you bit. So like, how do you figure out who you are? So I know you, you probably might not believe this at this moment, but I am actually an introvert. Okay, I am an extreme <laughs> introvert. I basically didn't talk to anyone today so that I could have the energy to come here and talk to all you guys. And the fact that there's a whole other room of people and people watching me is freaking me out a bit. <laughs> so this is not a normal place for me to be. My normal is just one-to-one. -one. I excel. That's my comfort zone. I'm good at that. This, this is a stretch, but I've been doing it enough now. And here is sort of how a couple of different ways how you figure out what you're doing. So I always personally wanted to make a difference, right? I wanted to use my life and my work and I wanted it all to come together and I was personally passionate about my own evolution and being my best, you know, that's just sort of like how my, in my DNA, it's not in everyone's DNA. So these, so the first question you think about, what makes you unique, right? So for me, I thought everyone's like that, but they're not, right? And I also have an ability, which I realized only after that it was an ability, I just thought, oh, everybody's like this. I can talk to anybody, I don't care who you are, what, racial, ethnic, socioeconomic, any kind of background, apparently, I am able to like connect with you about something and talk to you and find some point of connection and like, it's just like breathing for me. And I realized that's not, not everyone can do that, right? Um, so, so for you guys, what are the things that you do that are like breathing? That you don't even think are special. But if you do think about it, you're like, huh, actually, not everyone can do that thing, right? So like, what's the thing that like people are always telling you you're so good at? Oh my God, you're so organized. Oh my God, those are the best you know, brownies I've ever had. Oh my God, like you're really good at connecting dots. Or oh my God, you're amazing at building whatever. Like, what's the thing, the comment that you get all the time that, um, that you're like, whatever, I'm just doing this. Like, it's like nothing, it's easy to you. You know, like another, like I have a friend that like loves to like, she once came and like did my, you know, organized my closet. And I was like, I would rather have a root canal than go to the <laughs> closet and, and do that. You know what I mean? But that, she liked to do that. Like, God bless everyone with what they like to do because like we're all different, right? So, um, and, 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 a, and a point that I forgot to sort of mention earlier about the sort of the, the peace part of bringing, bringing world peace and answering this question is that, you know, we're all part of this big puzzle, right? So we all have some unique combination of talent, skills, abilities, interests, like whatever, you, like it's just your combination. And, um, you know, it's, and it, it includes everything and, and so, also, when you think about this question about what makes you unique, you have to also take into consideration, they do a talk called um, Authentic Branding, Letting the Real You Shine in Any Situation, which I'll be here, I think, March 1st. But think about all of the different influences that have made you what you are. So from your family, from the geographical location, 
from your gender, from your race, from your religion, from your peer group? Like, what are all the things that kind of made you what, they, what you are? And how really true are they for you when you really deconstruct it? So, um, like for me, I mean, you know, a, a funny example or very true example, I grew up in Long Island. Um, I was the first in my family to go to college, da, da, da. My parents, their only aspiration for me, and I'm not joking, their only aspiration for me <laughs> growing up, is that I heard it repeatedly, was to marry rich. <laughs> and to marry specifically a nice Jewish doctor. And I'm not even Jewish, by the way. <laughs> but that was like what they thought, that was their idea of what would be a prosperous, successful life for me. That's what they thought would make me happy. I couldn't have gone more different from that, that route. But what, you know, what was sort of like, so again, think about like growing up, like what were the influences that kind of made you who you are and, uh, and have you been able to shed some of them that didn't feel right? Right? So there's, there's lots of different things that, that play into that. Um, but and another way to think about like things that, that are um, that make you who you are is you know if you if you want to get to know someone, right? What do you do? You spend time with them, right? So I like to say date yourself. Okay? <laughs> date yourself. Go to the movies by yourself. You get to pick your own movie. Go treat yourself to a meal. Go, I know it's a little cold out, but you know, spend time in the park. Take a vacation, do a little retreat. Go to classes on your own. Like, like spend quality time with yourself. And when I say spend time with yourself, I don't mean binge watching Game of Thrones <laughs> and drinking, you know, a case of beer, okay? <laughs> I mean, once, once in a while, fine, we all need our little escape, right? But, you know, take the time to, like, spend quality time with yourself. Because, again, you don't know who you are, really. You know, you have to spend time. Well, well what do I like? I, so I always refer to that movie uh, with Julia Roberts and, and Richard Gere with the runaway bride. Mm -hmm. And she, like, keeps marrying the different guys or whatever. And then at one point, she's, like, you know, eating, like, different eggs. And Richard Gere's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm not really sure what kind of eggs I like, so I'm trying them all. Because when she was with the different guys, well, Richard liked poached eggs, and so-and-so liked scrambled eggs, so like she would only eat the eggs of the guy that she was dating, and she didn't know what she liked. She didn't know what she liked. So, you know, take that time to figure out, what do I like? What feels good to me? What am I passionate about? Um, and, um, you know, and, and be prepared, by the way, if some things come up that you discover that you're like, oh, really? That's me? I like that. That's drastically, that's radically different from who I thought I was. Uh, from, you know, from who I thought I was, from the rest of my family, from the rest of my peer group. Like, oh, I'm different. Like, I'm different than what I thought I was. I like these things that are like not like what everybody else likes. So I want to do stuff that's not what anybody else wants to do. You know. So then there comes sort of accepting that that's who you are, right? So you have to do the discovery, then you have to do the acceptance of it, right? The acceptance takes some courage. Which core? I will always say courage, core, heart, okay? Love, self-love, because then you gotta. Love it. Love yourself for being whatever it is you are, whatever combination of things that you are, you gotta love it, accept it, and love it, own it. So, you know, and, and I know I'm a little going all over the place, and I'm actually gonna come back to your to question. But, you know, again, going back to this thing like, oh, I want purpose, I want meaning, and I want to help people. So let's say, you know, I, and I've had this situation sometimes with people who want to work for nonprofits, or I've had people that maybe we're going very Catholic or whatever, they've got this uh, repressed Catholic guilt or, or whatever it is, and you know, they really love fashion. And they feel so guilty about loving fashion because they don't think, well, what purpose does that serve? What kind of meaning? How am I serving people? Um, but guess what? I don't see anyone in here naked. <laughs> it's pretty cold outside. 
you all have these nice puffy jackets I'm doing myself. Right? I got my cute little red jacket on here that I like, that I feel good in. So there's nothing that is insignificant. If that's what you love, people are going to benefit. Now, are there idiots and nonsense in, in fashion industry that seems ridiculous? Of course. In every industry there is, right? You know, there is in everything. But, you know, think about designing something that someone feels good in, that they're going to wear to their interview, that they're going to wear to their wedding, that, you know, that they just feel like themselves in. Right? right? Our clothing is just an expression of who we are. It's a uniform. It's how we want people to perceive us. But someone's got to make them. Someone's got to design them. Someone's got to make them. Someone's got to manufacture them, drive them, be in the store, sell them. So that you can have them. So there's nothing that's insignificant. So whatever your thing is, if you think, oh, like you want to be a doctor or whatever, you want, you know, or your parents want to be your doctor, but, you know, you really or you like to do stand-up and you want to be a comedian, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? What's, what's the best medicine around? Yeah, it's laughter. So also think about things in different ways. So you can be a healer in a way that's not <coughs> traditionally what is considered a healer, right? If that's your desire. So being funny, being a comedian might not seem so noble, right? But oh my God, you can make people laugh and that is like a, the biggest gift to make someone feel good. And also the science of all the chemicals and things that happen that literally it is a, a healthy thing to do. And then there's the guy, what's his name? The Kim, uh, John, not Kim John, but Ken John, who actually was a doctor <laughs> and then like got into the Hangover movies and actually is a comedian now, which I think is, is great. But so there's nothing insignificant. And um, like you just really have to just own it and trust that whatever that thing is, first of all, you're gonna be fulfilled, right? So it's purpose for your own life's evolution. You're gonna feel fulfilled and, and it's purposeful for you. And then the people that are gonna experience you as a result, either from the peace and fulfillment that you're just bringing to the room, remember like we talked about before, or the actual product or service that you're offering. So to get back to your question, so you know, I can listen to people, I can not, I can like get to the root of a, a, of a situation like really quickly, people don't always like to hear that by the way, um, this is, can be some strong medicine, but you know, not um, everyone can do that. But it's to me, it's like breathing. So, so in, in thinking about some of your own unique characteristics, one column is one of the things that come naturally, like breathing. Now the other column is the things that scare the bejesus out of you. <laughs> okay? So the things that absolutely terrify you. So if you had told me, you know, 15, 20 years ago that I'd be standing in front of a room of now 100 people and whoever's watching on Facebook, um, like just talking about stuff with nothing else really, just talking about my own ideas and feelings and thoughts about things and observations, I would have said you're crazy. I used to, when I used to have to give presentations when I was younger, I would get stiff necks, I would get come down with bronchitis, I mean, I would be terrified. Now, if you didn't, if you haven't already noticed, I'm kind of tall, okay? So with these shoes on, I'm probably 6'2". All I've ever wanted to do was hide. Really hard to hide when you're six foot tall, six two with shoes on. Really hard to hide. All I ever want to do is be in the background and hide. But clearly, the universe has some other plan for me because here's the other thing: I had something to say. So I'm not a speaker, and I'm sure you've seen lots of speakers again. The PowerPoint, super polished, but well, like I'm ten, I talk with my hands. I say lots of likes and ums. I'm the way I talk to you from the stage is the same way I'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one is the same way I talk to my friend or my brother. It's just how I do it. Whether that's good speaking etiquette or not, I kind of don't care because you know why? I've been doing it for 15 years now and every time I do it, no matter how uncomfortable I am, no matter how terrible I think I do, I always get a positive response. And you have to pay attention to that. 
So yes, I've been doing it long enough now that I, I am a little more comfortable and all of that. But especially early on, I had something to say and what I had to say over ran the fear of standing up in front of people. Does that make sense? Mm. So I was like, I gotta just get over that because I, I, I need to say this to people. So, but then when I started doing it, I would get such a positive response that I was like, oh, okay, I guess I should keep doing this. Even though it's not my most comfortable place, like at all. So, um, you just, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt said, do the thing that, fe that you fear the most. So there's something in that, right? There's something in that. So that's the, an area to develop, right? There's the breathing and coming naturally thing. So you can capitalize on that. But then there's the area to develop, to exercise. It's a muscle that you can exercise and build upon. And there's some real magic in that, you know? There's some real... Juju, whatever you want to call it, because I can't explain what I do. I really can't when I'm doing this kind of stuff. I can do the coaching thing. I'm like, you know, I'm very confident in that. But, you know, you got to trust sometimes. You got to kind of trust, like, the signs from the universe, so to speak. In fact, I was just watching the other day, you know, RuPaul? You know RuPaul, who I love, by the way, because he has my birthday and he's really tall. Um, you know, and his philosophy is also, you know, love yourself. And you know, what you want anybody else, and, and you know, the whole world is drag and all that kind of stuff. But he was he was not like, oh, I'm just like drag. He didn't grow up thinking he was a drag queen. He wanted to like just be a performer and like a punk rock person. And um, the way he did drag was because that's what people responded to. So he's like, huh, that's weird. <laughs> like that, because that wasn't really necessarily what he thought he was going to do or what he felt most comfortable doing or what he wanted to really develop necessarily. But he did it once and he's like, oh, okay. That's what people want. That's, that's apparently my gift. So that's what I'm saying. It's not all something that we control from our brain. It's like a co-creation thing, right? You got to put yourself out there. You know, I had something to say. He tried this thing, whatever it is. And then what is the response that comes back? And pay attention. Because guess what? If people are benefiting from me doing this, I can be uncomfortable for a little bit and do it. You know? So, um, and yeah, and so, again, I'm skipping around a little bit. Um, some other things to think about, like what do you lose track of time? You know, when do you lose track of time? What are you doing that you completely lose track of time? What do you do that you would do even if you didn't get paid? When I started the Women's Mosaic, um, I would, you know, we I, I produced over a hundred events for, for women to come together and learn from each other. And I remember very clearly a couple years in, and it, you know, it's hard, hard starting your own business and your own nonprofit, et cetera. And I stopped and I said, okay, like if I had a million dollars right now, what would I be doing? And the answer was exactly what I was doing. Now I might've had an apartment, I might be able to take a car service somewhere, you know, but I would have been doing the same exact thing, regardless of how much money I was going to do. Or if I had the money, I would still be doing that. Because this that wasn't about the money, it was what gave me fulfillment and meaning and purpose. And I loved it. So what's something like that you would, even if you know you got paid for it, you didn't get it, you would just do it. Um, and, and also think about what is your definition of prosperity and success? What is your definition? Because your definition is going to be different than his definition, is going to be different than his definition, is going to be different, different than her definition. Everyone's going to have their own definition of prosperity and success. And so it could be, you know, you want to just make a living on your art, you know, and so whatever that looks like on paper financially. But if you make that, then you are prosperous, right? And you're successful. And okay, fine. Maybe you do want to have a CEO title, and maybe you want to have a certain, you know, material things. Okay, fine. That's what you want. That's your definition of prosperity and success. As long as you're not doing it for sort of ego and insecurity, you know, there's a, as long as it's a healthy uh, desire. But it's going to look different for everyone. And it also might look different from your peer group, your family what society says, and all of these things. So you have to be confident and like, this is what I know is right for me. 
And if, if it doesn't look right to anyone else, it doesn't matter because guess what? You're in your own body. You're the one that's living your life. So what is your definition of prosperity and success? Yeah. You believe that we all have a divine assignment and do you believe that and do you think? I, I do believe that. I, I believe that, um, yeah, because if you, that's why it's like if you figure out who you are and if you figure out what is your unique combination of gifts, talents, abilities, like that's the piece of the puzzle. We're, we all are a piece of a puzzle. So like everyone does kind of have their job to do. And it's up to us to do that job. So I do, I do believe that. Um, so, um, okay, any other questions, comments? Okay. So, um, uh, I just have a quote here. T.G. Jake says, when you find your purpose, your provision finds you. It's like, if you do what you love, the money will follow. So you need to decide. Okay, so you need to decide. So once you figure out some of the things, okay, how do I make a living doing this? Well, again, life is changing, okay? This is a, a blessing and a curse. And this could help you have a career and a business, and it could ruin your career and your business, right? <laughs> so it just depends, right? And you have to decide what's right for you. So, for instance, let's say you love mountain biking, right? And that is the thing that gives you the most you know, joy and freedom and pleasure. You probably can't make a living mountain biking. I mean, like you never say never, but you know, you probably can't. But don't get a job that works your butt off 80 hours a week and every other weekend so you can never go mountain biking. You understand? So make sure that you want your, and I always, I'm just like, this is, make sure that I get this right. Make sure that your lifestyle you know, make sure that your job fits your lifestyle. You don't want to create your lifestyle around your job, right? Is that right? Does that make sense? A little bit twisted. You know, you, so, so some people, I mean, you have to know this for yourself. Some people like a nine to five structure. You want to go to a job and come back. And that's cool. You got to know that about yourself. Some people are more entrepreneurial spirit. Great. Know that about yourself. Some people are you know great at accounting or whatever great then just figure out what your passion is and go be an accountant for that thing because guess what everyone needs an accountant right so just put yourself in an environment or a situation that speaks to you maybe the function is not necessarily your thing but put yourself in an environment that that is positive right that that has some connection that you have some connection or interest or passion about and if you can't do that then just make sure it's a job that doesn't suck the life out of you. And that you can then pursue your passion and pursue your volunteering and pursue your little side business outside of your job. So people come to me as a coach and, and you know, sometimes they're not happy but when I tell them to stay in their jobs. <laughs> right? But sometimes if I take, because I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a holistic Obviously, you need to get that minded coach. So when I'm looking at someone, I'm looking at every aspect of their life. And I'm trying to understand what, where their pain points are, what gets them excited, and, and where they want to put their energy, and what's realistic for them financially and responsibility-wise also, right? We have to take into consideration all these things and the age that you are, <coughs> culturally ageism exists, and all these things. So taking that all into consideration, sometimes you should just stay in your job. I know people hate that idea, but again, it's you flip your attitude about it, right? If you understand, okay, this job is actually serving a purpose. I know why I'm here because it's giving me the stability. Uh, it doesn't, uh, yes, I'm bored to tears, but guess what? That means I have extra creative juices. I have extra energy that I can put someplace else because the job's not sucking it out. So you shift your attitude about your current situation then it's like, oh, okay, now I can do all these other things, and then you can have both, right? Because especially with, unfortunately, a lot of creative pursuits, and again, because of technology and all sorts of other things, it is harder to make a living doing a lot of those types of things. So how can you still express yourself? How can you still do those things and have, you know, and be able to, to make a living and to, to pay your bills and do whatever you need to do and own up to your responsibilities? But it's it's gonna look different for every single person. And some people are more comfortable with risk. 
and unknown and not knowing where your next paycheck or how you're gonna pay that next bill. Some people are comfortable with that. We're not, you know, as comfortable as you can be. Nobody loves that. Um, well, unless you're like a, an adrenaline junkie, maybe you do, but, um, you know, what is, you know, what, where can you stretch yourself enough, right? Because you don't want to be too cozy and comfortable, where you can cobble together an existence that makes sense for you. Like, it kind of is pretty simple. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Like, like your job doesn't have to be the be-all, end-all. The relationship doesn't have to be all that. Like, everyone's going to look different for everyone. And what, what's right for you is, is going to be not right for you. And that's why it goes back to who are you, right? Listening to your own thoughts, feeling your own feelings, getting the intuition, paying attention, not listening to what social media says, not comparing yourself. Please do not compare yourself to everybody that's on social media, especially the young people, I don't know, my, my young people, my millennials especially, but you know, stay in your own lane. Stay in your own movie. And I'm telling you, not everyone is posting on Facebook when they're crying on the bathroom floor. <laughs> You know, when they're like, it's not having sleepless nights because they're miserable. Not going on Facebook, or maybe sometimes it is, but you know, who wants to do that? <laughs> so, um, you know, or Instagram. And remember, hello, you know, lighting, fake framing. You know, look, these are all tricks of the trade that can like trick our minds into thinking everyone else is having some wonderful, fantastic life and I'm a loser. Not true. Wake up to everyone's having a hard time, everyone's doing their own thing, and just put all the social media stuff in its proper place. Yes? Yeah, it's a first thing a long time ago, I think, I don't know why. Um, but I, I hear a lot of people talk about, this is what I want to do, I know what I want to do, but it has to be in New York, I have to have a uh, thousand dollar a month apartment I have to have this I have to have these shoes and I, I think that's a big issue right that's all you know what you want to do but maybe you actually want those things and not the, the um, uh, basket weaving so it's it's did you ever have that with people with your clients um, yeah, if it, yeah, and if it's unrealistic, I tell them it's unrealistic, but usually that kind of a list that you describe is yeah. coming from, like, not their true, authentic self. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, so my, my job, sometimes your job is to do that, is to get into your body and figure out what you're doing, and that's actually the job search, is becoming more authentic with yourself. Last week, you can repeat the question on a regular basis. Oh, okay. The question was like, if if someone um, has a list. just like has a list that appears to be sort somewhat materialistic, is what you you described. Well, to I me. mean, everything you've said today is, you know, if they just stuck to that, but then they found out, oh, but then I can't live here, or I can't have this, or like if someone self limits themselves, like right. if someone limits, like they make a list because they think X Y Z, but they're not open to, okay, this is what I think I want, but maybe, you know, I, if I'm open to, maybe there's something better, right? So I want this or something better, right? Leave yourself the space mm -hmm. to explore. So let's say you say I want, you know, an apartment in New York City and blah, 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 but let's say you travel to Nashville and all of a sudden you find yourself feeling like, yeah, this feels right. But because you've never been to Nashville, how would you have known? That's more like along the lines of what we want, it's not necessarily what we need. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that's a more complicated question. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, because sometimes you get what you need because you need to confront something in order to grow and learn. So you get it, you get something that you need in that sense. But in terms of like what you how you want to grow and evolve, go with what feels good. Go with what feels natural, go, except for the, the Jesus part, but if you're getting really positive response to the Jesus thing that you're doing, right? Um, you know, it's, it, it should be what you desire. It's, life is not supposed to be so much suffering, right? So, 
you know, I think we make it harder for ourselves than we think it needs to be. You know, and, and sometimes it is a simple attitude change. So like I was saying about like your job, it's like, you know, okay, so if you flip the switch about how you're connecting and engaging with that job and you give it a different sort of assignment or role in your life, all of a sudden it's not so painful to go to work anymore. But it's the same exact situation. It's just that your attitude and perception and understanding of why you're doing what you're doing has changed. But you always are going to win when you do something that feels good, as long as it's healthy and you're not hurting anybody. You know, and that you express yourself, like whatever that expression is. So, you know, just like speaking, I don't read books. Like, I don't really read. I'm, dis I'm slightly dyslexic. I'm not a wordsmith. My grammar is terrible. I don't have a big vocabulary. I'm not a literary person in any way, shape, or form. I have something to say. And so, 2010, New Year's, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, this is all this hype is just driving me nuts. This is not helpful to people. And I wanted, and I thought, oh, I guess I need a newsletter. So, like, I just combined, like, this burning thing that I wanted to say to people. And I was like, oh, I need a newsletter. And so I just started writing these essays. And it was not, so do you understand? This was not a preconceived, I'm going to write essays and I'm going to then make them into a book and blah, 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 blah. No, it was like, I had something to say. I wrote it and people responded positively. And then I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should just do this every week. <laughs> and I disciplined myself. And every single week for two years, I did not miss a week, I wrote an original 800 word essay. And it would take me forever because I'm not a writer, right? So I'm not a writer. <laughs> but I'm like, I had stuff that I wanted to say, and then I'd have to like edit them five times, and they still wouldn't come out good, but whatever. Every time I would send out an essay, people would be like, you're a good writer. And I was like, what? Like, that was a surprise to me. And so much so that, like, after a couple months of doing it, I was at, like, a big event somewhere. It was a big room of people like this. Didn't know anybody. Sat in the back, and they did the exercise where you, like, turn to the person and introduce yourself. So I'm sitting in the back, and, and this, you know, I introduced myself. I said, oh, I'm Christina. And she looks at me. She goes, are you an artist? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she goes, I get your email. She goes, it really helped me. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, okay. So again, that was not preconceived. That was not a thought out thing. That was something that evolved naturally. And hello, who knew that I'd have a published book of 131 essays from the first year, first five years. I, I caught on that I don't have to do one every, because I can read one of them. So I caught on that I had to give myself a break and not writing any one every week. But now, and I've written since that book, and it's now circulating in the New York Public Library. Like, cool, that was never a plan. Yeah. I'm not sure if you already answered this by saying it's situational, but if you are working a job where you feel like it's draining your life force, is it okay to take a leap and quit, or should you really? Every, that's going to be a different answer for every person. So it would not be responsible for me to be like, yeah, sure, just quit if you got nothing going on. I'd have to really like look at all aspects of what's going on, what are your savings, what are your you know, we'd have to take a look at it. And yeah, at some times it might be like, yeah, it's time to go. You know, because probably what's going to happen, if you don't make that decision, it's going to be made for you at some point. So again, I'd rather be proactive about the situation and do it on my time rather than on some other time. So I know we're, we're, we're sort of running short on time. I just want to make sure I hit everything. Any, any other questions, comments before? Uh, yeah. This might be too sort of specific, but if you feel that you kind of know what you're supposed to be doing, but but you're in an industry that's shriveling, like how do you figure out other ways to apply your skills and your training? So you know that's the million dollar question for a lot of people. <clears throat> so um, repeat the question. Oh, we repeat the question. Sorry. So she's asking if you know what you want to do, but the industry is not the industry shrinking, or there's less opportunity in the things that you want to be doing professionally. It's, it's not an easy question to answer because again, you know, this is great because, okay, you can start your own blog, you can start your own website, but how do you monetize it? And this is the million dollar question. So there is no great answer for it, unfortunately, and this is why we're in the middle of this sort of very uncertain, tumultuous times. Now, what I would say is that you gotta trust yourself and you have to work your connections and listen to yourself and 
seeing what feels right to you and where you can apply yourself to do whatever it is that you want to do and get paid for it or create some situation where maybe you'll do something else that you don't love but you're gonna get paid for it and you can do this other thing too or maybe you can negotiate things and here's the other thing too that i always love to tell people the perfect job for you the perfect situation might not even exist today might not even exist think about how many companies are being created how many, as many industries and things are dying there's new ones that are popping up so for me i started coaching 10 years ago and uh, that I was written about, like I had a client that wrote an article about me and that I wrote for this website and fast forward a couple of years because let's see, this was 2010 I started and then 2013, I think was maybe some of these articles. And so I had a relationship with this website, a new startup website. And then guess what, two years ago, oh, they're gonna have coaches on their website. Guess who was an inaugural coach on that website? That, that the main source uh, of my business. So that didn't even exist before 2015. How could I have planned on that? But I just kept doing what I knew was right. And I sort of in the essence of my mind, I was like, oh, I just want to like be contract. I want to work for, and it, it, the form manifested, but I couldn't think about it. So think about what is the essence that you want to do because the actual form may or may not even exist today, but it'll exist six months from now. It'll exist a year from now. As long as you are sticking to what's right for you, you're going to be ready when that opportunity does pre present itself. You're going to be ready when that company one is looking for someone that is exactly your qualifications. It just doesn't exist today. It doesn't exist today. I mean, that, that has happened so many, that happened to my intern. When she was in college, she didn't think, you know, you, don't, you, you didn't major in social media or SEO marketing. It didn't exist. Right? So there's whole job titles that exist today that didn't exist, you know, five, ten years ago. So that's the other thing about the security, right? So if you just do you and kind of just keep following that and keep making your connections, like when that opportunity comes, like you'll be the first person that somebody will think about. Or you'll be the right person at the right time. So um, I know I kind of want to sort of finish up a little bit, but um, so yeah, so um, I just want to make sure I'm correct. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different examples of people like being who you are, and like there's no small, there, there's nothing <coughs> too small. I mean, do you guys ever hear of this this documentary called A Man Called Pearl, A Man Named Pearl? You can Google it, A Man Named Pearl. This guy was like a sharecropper son, uh, African American guy in South Carolina, poor, no education, loved plants, loved. So he had no money, so he would go and he would take the um, thrown away little shrubs from the, from the nursery, and he would like rehabilitate them. And he would he had a garden, right? And he would this is over a period of years, and he figured out how to do like topiaries and like these really elaborate sculptures and things like that. Now here's a town in South Carolina that was this manufacturing town that was like shh, you know like that was really going downhill. But Pearl's just doing his thing because he loves his garden, he loves his plants, he loves his like creative, whatever he's doing. So at some point, people get wind of his garden, right? People get wind of his garden. Like the people in England who are like the garden people <laughs> get wind of it. And they're doing trips to this little town in the middle of South Carolina to go see Pearl's garden. And now guess what? There's some economy coming to South Carolina because Pearl likes to throw the light little shrubs in the nursery. It's really great. And so so not only did he, again, he just loved his little plants and he wanted to make this beautiful garden. Like he wasn't doing that for anybody, he did it for himself. But look at what him just serving himself and his own creative expression did. He turns around, helps turn around town, you know, on his magazine, blah, blah, blah. And not only that, now he's like this inspiration, right? So now you're an inspiration for young people and other people to follow their passions and do their thing. And just, you know, the integrity with which he did it and the precision and the love, like, it's great. So I, I really, there's nothing that's too insignificant. And I just want you to really know that you have something special in you and it could be something so obscure, but that's your thing.
that's your thing. And just do with it whatever you feel like you need to do and see what happens. See how people respond to it. See how people react. Yeah. What was the name of the book again? Oh, it was a, a documentary, A Man Called Pearl or A Man Named Pearl. So, um, yeah, so I mean, I can talk a lot. I'm also thinking about what you did when you were a kid is another clue. So what did you do when you were a kid? How did you play? I used to play teacher. I used to be the teacher. My brothers would be my students. So my first job out of school was a Spanish teacher. As a, and then I talked for NYU and did all this other stuff. So, okay, guess what I'm doing? I'm standing in front of a room of people. Would you call me a teacher traditionally? No, but hello. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Right? So look at what did you do? I had a friend, her and her brother, she used to write stories, her brother used to act them out. Very literally, she became an award-winning novelist, he became an actual working actor. He did very well for himself. Like, that's pretty literal. So, but, so, so also just, it doesn't mean this is going to be an easy path, by the way. Doing this work and figuring this stuff out. It's not going to be easy. But guess what? It's going to mean something to you. It's going to be more fulfilling. The stress and all of that will be worth it. It's much easier to close your eyes and just sleepwalk through life. Much easier. It's much easier to do that. But obviously, you guys are not up for that because you wouldn't have your butts in these chairs right now. <laughs> so, um, so I know I have to wrap up. So, um, yeah, so I mean, you want to do what you love, the money will follow. I, 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 we've talked about lots of things here today. I'm just going to pass out. I'm going to do a little housekeeping right now. Um, I work with people individually. So the other thing is if, I, if you're too confused, if you're not sure what's going on, if you need someone to sit down with you and help you figure this out and give you some clarity and balance and direction moving forward, there's lots of different ways that you can work with me over a variety of different price points because I know budget is a factor. I have group coaching, I have workshops. Um, I can work with you one-on-one -on -one over a period of time or just a two hour sit down or a one hour phone call. All the information is floating around. Um, I have, next week is a group coaching, um, which is great because we can, you can listen to other people's stories, which is always really interesting. That's next Tuesday, it's once a month. I have a visioning workshop coming up on the 17th, which is a great way to get into your right brain and create, I know you guys have heard of vision boards, but this is a very subconscious way of doing it, and we do we interact with the vision board. It's this great thing. I'm doing it for before people knew what a vision board was. I've been doing them for like 17 years or something when I was 12. But um, so yeah, so make sure the most important thing is to be on my mailing list because you'll find out when I'm speaking. You'll get my personal growth essays. I'm going to be starting a monthly motivation group thing. Um, there's more information over here you can come look at. If you want to fill out a survey, you'll get a discount on my coaching. If you sign up tonight for coaching, um, I'll also give you a free um, group coaching or a discount. You can talk to me about that, but it's important to sign up tonight if you want to do that. I've also got, we've talked about so many things today, and I want you to remember whatever you need to remember. Top one, two, or three things, okay? Because you're going to walk out into the real world and it's going to be like, ah, so I want you to think about one or two or three things, and I'm going to give you this little token to hold on to. And so you are going to remember, if you be who you are, the prosperity will follow. Okay, so everyone gets one of these. Don't fish around, because the amount doesn't matter. Okay? Um, you could have a million $5 bills or one $100 bill. So, but anyway, I just want to leave you with this quote, which is um, from Khalil Gibran. When you work, you fulfill a part of Earth's farthest dream, assigned to you when that dream was born. And in keeping yourself with labor, you are in truth loving life. And to love life through labor is to be intimate with life's inmost secret. Work is love made visible. So love yourself, love what you do, and we'll all be better for it. And I wish you all the best, and I'm happy to help you with whatever you want in your journey. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great night.